Welcome to the Engineering Economy course. Today we will begin with a chapter related to time value of money. Now this chapter, in this chapter we will explain several things. We will uh, explain the difference between the interest rate types and we will address uh, the concept of equivalence, the annuity, gradients, uh, effective interest rates and nominal interest rates. But before we begin, uh, I just need to tell you what's meant by the time value of money. There is a value for the money related to time. For example, if I tell you, would you prefer to take $1 today or this $1 tomorrow? You need to understand that the $1 today is better than $1 tomorrow. Why? Because you can take this $1 today and do a certain investment with it so that you can generate more amount of money today. So why postpone it to uh, the future? So this is uh, the concept of the time value of money. And we will later learn in this chapter how to get the equivalence of any amount in the present to the future and vice versa. But first, uh, let's begin with explaining uh, the types of interests. We have two types of interest rate. You know that whenever you borrow a certain amount of money, you'll have to return this amount plus an extra amount, which is the interest rate. Uh, now we have the simple interest rate and we have the compounded interest rate. The simple interest rate is not actually used in real life situations when you take any loans. We use the compounded interest rate. But I am mentioning it here uh, just to uh, be able to differentiate between the two types. So if I want to calculate uh, the simple interest rate, I'm going to use this formula. I equals to P, which is the principal amount borrowed, multiplied by N, number of periods of your loan, multiplied by uh, the interest rate per period. So when you are returning uh, the money, you will be returning the principal amount plus the interest. Let's consider this example here. If you uh, took $1,000 and invested for three years, so three years is your period, and this $1,000 is the principal amount P, and the interest rate per period is 10%, so this is the small i, what would be the interest earned and the total amount owed at the end of three years? So by applying the formula, I equals P, the principal amount of 1,000, times N, 3 times I, which is 10%, so 0 0.1. So this is the interest uh, that you will have to repay. Now what will be the total amount owed at the end of three years? It will be the principal amount, the 1,000, plus the $300, so the total amount is $1,300. Now, if I want uh, to see the same example, but I want to calculate the compounded interest rate. So, I still have the principal amount of money, which is 1,000, and the interest rate per period is 10%. So, we have to see the, the first period, the first year. By the end of year one, what will be the amount owed? Now, the principal amount was 1,000. What's the 10% of this 1,000? It's $100. So by the end of year 1, I owe, or I have to repay, the 1,000 plus the 100. So this is the total amount owed by the end of period 1. What will be the amount owed at the beginning of period 2? It's the same amount here, the 1,100. But I will have to apply the 10% interest rate on this new principal amount. So the 10% of the 1,100 is 110. What will be the total amount owed? It is the 1,100 1, plus 110. So it is 1,210. This will be the new principal amount owed at the beginning of uh, period 3. I'm going to apply the 10% over this amount all over again. By the end of period 3, this is the amount owed. So if you compare the simple interest rate and the compounded interest rate, you will see that the compounded interest rate will give you a higher number. Using the simple interest rate, the amount owed after three years was $1,300. $1, However, 
with a compounded interest rate amount owed is 1331 Now I want to show you how do we draw the cash flow diagram. For any example that we're going to take, the first step is always drawing the cash flow diagram, which is a visual tool to help you understand the situation better. Let's suppose here we have a certain investment, okay? So at uh, the present moment, at period zero, okay, I'm paying $17,000, okay? So you have to understand that a downward arrow represents something paid. And the upward arrow is something gained. Now this is the, the horizontal line that represents the periods in time. Okay, this is the first period. The period might be a month, might be years. So this is the end of period one. You will always say that this is the end of period, not the beginning of the period. So this is now. And this is the end of the first year. Here I know that uh, one year has passed, okay, or one month, depending on the period. So I see that this is my timeline. And this is the last arrow here. It is an upward arrow, okay. So it represents the amount in the future after four periods. You see that this is an upward arrow, so this is something gained. Okay, because you are making an investment at uh, an interest of 1%, and this is, will be uh, the equivalent value in the future. Okay, so we will always, always going to adapt, uh, adopt uh, the lender's viewpoint. This means that the first arrow is something paid. Okay, you are paying the money to do the investment. We will not begin any investment with an upward arrow. So always, always, we will be adopting the viewpoint of the lender. Let's see an example. Here I want to draw the cash flow diagram. We have an investment of $10,000. So this is happening at period zero. I'm investing it now. That will produce uniform annual Revenues of 5,310. Okay, so this amount is happening every year with the same equal amount annually. And it's a revenue, so you have to know that this is an upward arrow. For five years, this is my period. And then we will have a market or recovery value of $2,000 at the end of year five. What is this value? Now, suppose here that my investment was buying a car. I bought it for $10,000 and I'm using this car uh, to generate more money. I'm using it uh, as a taxi. Okay, so I expect to have some revenues and expenses. So my revenues annually would be 5310 But what about this value? Suppose that at the end of year 5, I decided to stop uh, this business. So, and I want to uh, sell this car. You originally bought it for $10,000 and you used it for five years. And when you want to uh, sell it at the end of year five, you will ask the market, what is the worth of this car? It is a used car. How much would the market give for it? So this is what uh, the market value meant by. Okay, we sometimes call it as the recovery value because you are recovering part of the initial investment that you have paid. So we can use uh, the term market value or recovery value or sometimes we say the salvage value. And it is uh, an amount that's taken at the end of the useful life of the asset or the investment and it's taken one time. Once, so you take it once at the end of the useful life of the asset. Now we have annual expenses that will be $3,000 at the end of each year for operation and maintenance. We want to draw the cash flow diagram. So we will start by having a horizontal line to show uh, the periods. It will look like this. This is my timeline. This is period 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5 because we have 5 years. Now at time 0, this is my initial investment. I'm paying this amount, so it has a downward arrow. 
and I have revenues of 5,310 uniform annual. The, this, um, this amount is happening every year. But you see that it's beginning from period one. We do not get any revenues right away. Yeah, I'm just beginning with my investment now and I'm getting revenues now. No, you, usually the revenues begin from uh, this, the, the next year. Okay, so here we have expenses of $3,000 and we have revenues of 5310 And at year 5, we have an extra value. This is the 2000, 